going to rush the bit. We'll, we'll talk about the big three in just a second, Sarah, but I want to bring it back to what Michael and I talked about, and you did as well with Michael on our pregame show, and that was what Steve Nash talked about, the effort and the discipline that wasn't there in game three. Uh, it was there, and it was there a uh, big time tonight. The discipline, the level of intensity, and I also just think, you know, for as much as we focus on, which I know we will, the extreme level of efficiency the Nets showed on the offensive end, it started defensively, and that's where they really flipped the switch on how they were able um, to open up this game because of getting stops and generating offense out of their defense and dictating the tempo of this game. And we have seen that time and time again with this Nets team of when they are clicking on all cylinders defensively, it unlocks how they can play, how they can operate. And that was a major factor in what allowed them to really perform at the level that they did here this evening. Yeah, uh, it's amazing how we talk about that all season long as a common denominator, Sarah, how the defense spurs along the offense on this team and the offense is just flat out deadly as we saw in the 141 points tonight. A big part of that was Kyrie Irving. You know, the, the hate in Boston, it could do one of two things. It could put you into a corner or it could fuel you. And Kyrie Irving was gassed up tonight. Tonight he was, and I, I think we saw a little bit of both sides of that when you go back to game three, and there was a tentativeness and a passiveness that we don't often see out of Irving just in how he's looking to attack, and it was a different look here this evening. It started with him getting to the free throw line. He saw a couple go through early, and then he was knocking down some three-point shots, getting at the inside. There was a nice balance to his game and where he was getting those looks from, and we also, when it comes to Kyrie, understand that you know he sent, tends to meet the moment and he talks so often throughout the course of this regular season about the main stage and getting to the main stage and my goodness this, this was a step and a part of it given the fact that the TD Garden was finally back at full capacity um, just the raucous crowd that I think he and this team knew that they would face but more than anything I think we saw the numbers the highlights um, but it was the consistent level of being locked in from Irving that the this Nets team needed um, in, in a special night here tonight for him. And it wasn't just Kyrie Irving, Sarah. Kevin Durant, as Ian said during the broadcast, stuck on automatic. Easy Money Sniper was just that tonight. Well, he's unguardable when he gets to his spots and he can just rise and shoot over. And I think we know the work and the tireless ethic that he has pouring into his shot, why he has the skill set he does um, to go along with the size. But my, Chris, he, he was doing anything he wanted to. And there was a variety. He was getting downhill. He was attacking, being aggressive, getting to the front of the cup. Of course, working in the mid-range. There was a lot of situations where they, the Nets would put him on the block and allow him to work in isolation. And he was scoring, but also finding finding his teammates and there was an awareness of when a second guy was going to run at him where the help was coming from and that to me was the most impressive part of, of all the buckets and all the baskets that he was making you could lay it out and look offensively on how the defense was playing him and he was able to stop and pop when he needed to he was able to go to the sides where the help couldn't get to him and you know Kevin Durant is a special special talent but nights like tonight whew, it is certainly fun to watch, Chris. Absolutely. Let's go back to the pregame show again, and I want to bring something up that you and Michael were talking about, and that was the assists in Game 3. The Nets very uncharacteristically only had 16 assists in Game 3. Tonight, you brought it up during the game, right when James Harden was right below matching that with 15. He has a career playoff high 18 tonight. He was unconscious. He almost had a 20-20 game, Sarah. James Harden filleted this Boston <laughs> defense, but I, I think I think the fun part about that, of course, the number is eye popping. But going into this game, there was an emphasis by Steve Nash and in this whole group to understand that even though Boston is inviting a lot of isolation because of their switching, they still need to be working the isolation because of the type of players they have, of which they were excellent at it, but also 
keeping movement, sharing the basketball, making Boston work on defense in forcing them to rotate and, and shift and get into more actions. And that's exactly what we saw. James Harden being uh, the focal point of taking advantage of that and getting everyone involved. So even if you look along the box score, um, the point production of the bench and some of the other players, it, it's nothing that is extraordinarily high, but it was the fact that there was that type of involvement and Harden was the key component of that. He is the orchestrator of this offense and it unlocks everything when he's able to find guys, move the basketball and pass the way he was this evening. Now you brought up another great point when Joe Harris is hitting his threes. It also unlocks the, the uh, offense as well mm -hmm. during the game. But you also brought up the bench, Sarah, and the bench really showed up and showed out Bruce Brown. He had 14 points. He had the most points among the bench mob, but the other guys, they did the little things that don't show up in the box score. And those are the things they need to do continuously if this team is going to be successful the rest of the run in the postseason. It's the energy that they brought. It shifted. And, and some things, though, Shearney do show up in the box score. Let's point to Nicholas Claxton's blocks. How many minutes did he end up playing? He played eight minutes, but he had four blocks. And that was a difference maker early on when the Nets were trying to settle into this game when Boston had taken that early leave. It shifted with Claxton and his recovery, his range, how he was all over the floor. Um, but everyone played their part. Tyler Johnson getting on the floor how he ins was inserted into um, the game and running the offense in some regard, getting the Nets into sets. Uh, Bruce Brown, a lot, of, a lot of that short roll action that we had gotten accustomed to seeing because the floor was so balanced and wide open with the Nets' three-point shooting. So uh, this is going to be you know, a key component for us to focus on as the playoffs continue because we know what we're going to get for the most part out of Kevin, out of James, out of Kyrie, but how the others are involved doing the little things in, in some of those uh, dirty work plays is something that continues to be so important in the eventual results of the ball games. Looking forward to Tuesday night and game five, Sarah. You know, it's the toughest thing to do, close out an opponent in a seven game series. So what do the Nets have to do in game five in Brooklyn to end this on Tuesday? much of the same formula that we saw here tonight that we saw in game two started the defensive end rotations have got to be tight communication taking care of the glass in particular the defensive glass and you know the offense making or missing shots is going to be part of it as we saw here tonight you know the nets dropping down a, a, a ton of buckets but they were able to be so efficient because of how they were moving the basketball the quality of looks that they were generating uh, we know that they have some of the most prolific scores in nba history but it is the functioning and the way in which they were getting those shots is going to be really important and it's going to be interesting to see Kemba Walker, of course, and Robert Williams did not play here tonight for the Celtics. It, it, that has an impact. So what their status will look like could affect, um, you know, just the complexion of the game. But more than anything for the Nets, it always circles back to them individually, collectively as a group, how they're able to come out and perform and and. You know, it's about the win, Chris, yes, but they've continued to say, acclimating with one another, the improvements they need to see because it's working towards something so much bigger. So how can they get themselves ready with the right mindset, attitude, and execution um, here as they try to close this out? Well, I'd say it's definitely trending in the right direction, Sarah. One more before I let you go. I just wanted to bring around the 50-40-90 thing one more time. We heard Ian say it during the broadcast, but I don't think people could really grab grasp just that those numbers throughout this game tonight for the Nets and putting up 141 points it's truly astounding it, it it's ridiculous Chris it is ridiculous and that's the type of productivity and efficiency that I think when you look at this group as a whole and when you think about the potential that they have with these type of players and scores that's something that is you know that's rare and you don't come across that often when you see everyone able to shoot and perform at that level um, and I'll circle back to the fact Chris that it, to me it was about the way the shots the way the offense um, was working and moving that allowed them uh, to knock down buckets like that and Chris to do so on the road in a hostile environment add that layer to the the elements of what they were dealing with the environment they were dealing with just makes it that much more impressive